Designing a cool area map, especially a battle map that you're going to use in a virtual tabletop, is really fun with the new dungeon draft. In the past, I would make my maps by hand, but in the new dungeon draft, I can make my maps faster and easier and still get great results. Zealzaddy is all about storytelling. To me, map making is part of storytelling. It sets the stage. In a game where it's the imagination, this kind of bridges that gap from imagination to something that feels a little more real. The map we're going to create will be used in a campaign I'm prepping for my first foray into Roll20. So I want it to be really cool. Now, the region map has already been created in Wonderdraft. It's on an island called Elixia. And the area that we want is a clearing in the middle of a forest. Here's what it looks like. It's got two standing stones, pillars, if you will. They are a gateway to the Feywild. Because of this, I really want it to feel like the land itself is trying to be reclaimed by the forest. I might have some dry grass, put in some dirt pathway through it, and then kind of wipe some of the pathway out. But even then, I want the trees to be feeling like they're closing in on this place. There will be remnants of an old camp here. There might be a few skeletons. Perhaps a centaur skeleton would be cool. Before we get started, make sure to click the thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the bell to get notifications of new content. By the way, you can watch our live streams at twitch.tv slash zealzaddy. I'm Scott Coventry, and welcome to Zealzaddy. So we're going to start by clicking on New. And in here, I'm not going to use a template, and I'm not going to use the map wizard. In this one, I'm just going to go 50 tiles, 50 tiles. That's it. Click OK. Before we go any further, I do want to check my preferences. I want to make sure that I have backups on. Every 10 minutes is fine. I don't need it more frequent than that. And then I want to make sure that I have undo set to a reasonable number, 32 levels of undo. That means you can hit undo 32 times in a row. All right, so I'm good with that. I'll just keep it. I am not even, don't even have to apply it. I'll just close it. When I come in, the first thing I'm going to see is I'm in the design tool. I don't need the design tool here. I've got a ground back, you know, a background that's that's terrain, that is uh, foresty type terrain. I'm not building walls or buildings, portals, cave brushes. What I do need is I need this. I need the terrain brush. That's going to become my, my main uh, tool in this one. I'm going to click on that. I'm also going to zoom out a little bit. I want to be able to see the map a little bit clearer from the, from the outset. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click Terrain Dirt. And I really want to have a, a grassy background. So I click that and it'll fill everything. The circle is pointing out how wide of an area I can fill if I hold it long enough. And I'm going to click and show you what that, what that means. Like when I first click, you don't even see anything, but if I hold it long enough, you'll see it will widen out, try and fill in that area. And this is a, a really beautiful um, feature to the interface itself is, if I use the scroll wheel, it changes the size of the selection area. So I'm gonna start filling some areas, and I want kind of a, a rough, loose area. And I'll, I'll be filling part of it in with dirt anyway. And I like the idea that they have to sort of find parts of the path as they go. So now I've got the rough grass. I'm going to put in now dirt in most of the center points. Make this a little bit wider again. Built it in sort of splotchy areas. I don't want it to fill in everywhere. I like the grass in, in, in patches and that are sort of left untouched. Let me uh, make this a little smaller again and make the path really get sort of disappeared into it and get even smaller here. A lot of the details to the road are, are lost oh, over time from the world, from the wild reclaiming the forest, which is a pretty cool thing. I always love that kind of stuff. It makes it easy to have a player get lost or uh, lose their way in a place like this. I'm gonna come back with the dry grass. I'm gonna rough in some other areas, maybe even some areas in the middle of the road. You know, because sometimes these Grasses will just take over places. See, when I do that, you really you erode the road and make it feel a little, a little more natural, a little rougher. So, with that being said, we've now created basically the road coming through. 
we've got over a dry grass area and then next to that you know like a grassy plains eventually that'll become trees i'm just not ready to put the trees in yet so the next thing i want to add is i want to add my standing stones there's going to be two of them one over here and one over here i'm going to click on this icon right here which is uh, my objects icon and I'm going to click the object tool. I can look for things that I'm, I want. In this case, I'm going to use the cave tag. And when you click a tag, it brings up all the assets under that tag over here. So I'm going to go with this piece. This will be my one of the standing stones, but you can see it's pretty small on the map. Really, if that's a five, five foot grid, it's a five foot piece. I want something bigger. So three. Now here's a, a place where the implementation of, rot of rotate has really been done well. It's just a scroll wheel. I can use the scroll wheel to turn the item to get to the place that I want it to be. I'm kind of liking it like that where it's the front face is facing the, ro the not road, but the open area and the grassy plain. So that's one. And I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna click I think this one for the second standing stone I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger so it's four and I'll rotate it also I like it so let's go to the camp tag uh, I'd like an old fireplace let's actually put it back here almost hidden behind this stuff perfect no it's not perfect I want to rotate it so let me undo that and then rotate it the other way nice I'm gonna go with this tent like it was left or abandoned. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to go with this one. Now, I think I need a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go maybe 1.5. Rotate a little bit. It'll be left out in the grass areas. Maybe I'll put another tent similar to it like that. I also want some skeletons. So I'm going to click on skeletons, which you can't see it because it's behind the video of me. So I'm going to go with... There you go, a pile of bones just somewhat left somewhere, uh, a little bit bigger than, than five feet. So let's find a place to put this. I'm kind of thinking that somewhere near the tent, let's zoom in a little. I, I really do want to see this a little closer. So if come down here and click 100%. If you hit the space bar, you don't even have to click and you move the mouse, holding the space bar becomes the drag tool. But I also want something a little more, more like monster bones could be a horse right uh, maybe closer to the standing stones i like it nice one thing i can do also is i can turn off the grid so i don't have to see the grid i really don't like to see the grid all the time i like to see what it looks like from a more natural perspective once i have that i'm going to start looking at um creating the natural world around it because really that is most of what I want them to see. I want them to see there's this weird and mysterious place. Now, the next thing that I want to add here is I really would like to have a little bit of water, not a lake so much as maybe a small pond. I think this would be a good place for a pond over in this area. Almost like a, you know, because water follows odd paths sometimes. Now, one thing that I like when you zoom in the water actually has movement built into it. Now let's change this train snow. We're not going to need it. So I'm going to get instead is some sand and sort of some sandy areas next to the water. Not everywhere, but in a few spots. Now I'm going to go back to the um, object tool and I'm going to select the object tool here and I'm going to go down and find trees. Uh, I'd like a log or two that's been cut nice. Pick up the scale. Now these are just leaves. I do want some scattered leaves in here, so I am going to go with that. I might use with with the scatter tool. Bring the scale down a bit. They are leaves after all. Oh, too much. I think that is too frequent. Let's go back up a bit. You'll notice that it will scatter the, the rotation of them too. I'm going to get some more leaves of a different type. Scatter those in different spots. I might remove some from some of the other areas. Like I don't like the ones out in the grass. I might just select those and delete them. To accelerate the pace of putting in the trees, 
because there were just so many trees to put in this map, I decided to do a time lapse here and just let you see the, the trees as they go in. The trees are of different sizes. I rotate them a lot so that even when I am using the same image multiple times, I'm rotating them to make them at least feel like they're not the same tree. I also added some boulders that are found around the area where the elixir is, the standing stones. Eventually I come back with more trees and shrubs, smaller things, shrubs and uh, bushes around some of the rocks that are there so they feel like they've been there for a long time. It's like water, and I, I want to have sort of a swirl of water somewhere in here to just sort of hint that maybe there's something in here that could be a problem, <laughs> could be dangerous. Maybe I'll put it out in the middle too. I love the feel of getting in, it feels like everything's overgrowing, that the wilds are taking over, the stones even are starting to be surrounded by trees and, and bushes and shrubs. Uh, the next thing I wanna go to is I wanna go to um, the environment effects. If I go to environment, I can select ambient light. If I wanna change the light in the, in the area, I can make it dark at night. I can bring it up, make it very bright. So if I wanted to go to a night shot, I can do that. And it gets sort of a, almost a blue luminescence, which I think is really cool. Then if I wanna add some light in here, like interesting, maybe something in the water is creating light. Ooh, maybe I'll make a smaller one in another area. There's some things in the water. at night you can see them that's cool finally let's go over here and go to map settings i'm going to change the oh i need to see the grid you see the grid again i'm going to change the grid color yeah white's too much too much but maybe a very very light 
a lighter gray. Oh, the red actually works pretty well against the blue. Let me save it. I think we've got a finished map that's pretty cool. Um, the environment I can change to the to the day when I'm ready to. As you've seen, Dungeon Draft is a powerful and feature-rich application, specifically made for doing the battle maps that we all know and love. And we barely scratch the surface of the myriad assets that are available for it. There's a lot more available by going to cartographyassets.com Dungeon Draft. One of these days, I think I might actually do a video on creating your own assets for both Dungeon Draft and Wonder Draft. Also, tell us how you make your maps. Are they hand-drawn? Do you use Dungeon Draft or Wonder Draft already? Or do you use one of the other great mapping tools out there? Thank you for joining us on this world-building journey. There's definitely more of these to come. We have a companion series called World Building Boot Camp. In that one, we talk about storytelling and the narrative of your RPGs. Click the video here to be taken to the playlist. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified of new posts. Come chat with us on social media, by the way. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, what else? We have a Discord server. You can watch our D&D live streams over twitch.tv slash zealzaddy. And finally, the maps we create here will be available on Patreon for free uh, at patreon.com slash zealzaddy. Well, I'm Scott Coventry, and I hope you enjoy deeper storytelling in your role-playing games.